So you need facts to take me out. Fairy tales won't do it. As you guys can. Okay. Bozo. Oh my gosh. Fucking bozo. Huh? So Drake's latest antics might be his most bold, but also his most insecure move of the entire year. It has been months since I last updated you guys on Drake, and back in the summer he was trying to make it seem like he was unbothered at every turn. Going bowling under the name 69 God, trying to show the world he wasn't a deadbeat father, and of course striking the duck lips pose time and time again. But I wanna tell you, that shit is crazy. Somebody said that's his voice. But now it looks like he <laughs> might be. No, quite that's embarrassing, bro. The, the crowd didn't even care. Possibly the most bothered man on the entire planet. For those of you that hadn't heard, Drake is now handing out lawsuits in regards to the Not Like Us diss record released against him by Kendrick Lamar earlier this year. And he's not even suing because he was being called a PDF. He's suing because he claims that the record label UMG artificially inflated the number of streams on this record Which using is modern day pay G artificially. That's funny. That's so funny because bro is saying called a PDF. Bro didn't even bro didn't even do anything. He didn't say anything about the whole oh he's calling me this. He didn't sue for defamation, but he's he's trying to take them down for playing his song. He's suing because he claims that the record label UMG artificially inflated the number of streams on this record using modern day payola and streaming bots. Frozen Moments LLC, which is exclusively owned by Drake, is now asking for a civil RICO to be levied against civil streaming Rico. service Spotify and recording label UMG Recordings. Drake says they conspired to knock him off the top of the mountain due to disagreements about their partnership that he and UMG have maintained for years, and that they use used Kendrick and his song Not Like Us as a vehicle to essentially do just that. In the lawsuit, Drake's team points out that Spotify is the biggest music streaming platform on earth, and they immediately paint the ties between them and UMG, noting their ongoing licensing agreements that they've had in place since 2020, and also that Spotify brought UMG at least 19% of their overall revenue in 2023. Basically, he's saying that these two have a close and very important partnership. In 2024, UMG did not rely on chance or even ordinary business practices to break through the noise on Spotify and likely other music platforms. It instead launched a campaign to manipulate and saturate the streaming services and airwaves with a song, Not Like Us, in order to make that song go viral, including by using bots and pay-to-play agreements. On information That's and crazy. belief, UMG charged Spotify licensing rates 30% lower than its usual licensing rates for Not Like Us. This is and belief. In exchange for Spotify affirmantly recommending the song to users who are searching for other unrelated songs and artists. Neither UMG nor Spotify disclosed that Spotify had received compensation of any kind in exchange for recommending the song. So Drake is basically claiming that UMG approached Spotify with this offer to make more money off of a hit record than they normally would, or at least to keep a larger percentage of the pie. Do you mind if I take a little sliver? Go for it. What even is this? Oh, beauty. A little sliver is nuts! Don't play? And in return, all they had to do was use their platform strategically to run the numbers up by boosting the algorithm for the song in an inorganic way. Drake also claims that UMG directly or through Interscope also conspired with and paid currently unknown parties to use quote-unquote bots to artificially inflate and spread not like us and deceive consumers into believing the song was more popular than it was in reality. One individual okay, but that, that what about the radio plays? This shit was all over the radio for a very long time, bro. Unknown to Petitioner revealed publicly on a popular podcast that Mr. Kendrick Lamar Duckworth's label, i.e. Interscope, paid him via third parties to use bots to achieve 30 million streams on Spotify in the first days of the release of Not Like Us, with the goal of jumpstarting the song spread and turning it into a crazy hit on the platform. The whistleblower further revealed that on May 6, 2024, an individual affiliated with Interscope sent him a payment of $2,500 via the digital payments platform Zelle, which is owned by a number of banks, and that he was promised another $2,500 
dollars and a percentage of the song's total sales for this initial push. And the popular podcast that they're talking about is actually DJ Academic's no, live show that he does. I talked about this apparent whistleblower in one of my last videos about Drake, and the guy didn't really seem to have a lot of merit to his claims. So somebody reaches out to you for 30 million streams, what'd you tell them? How, many, how much money? So I was promised payments after, but up front I was promised 5k. They sent they uh, sent me 2.5k, and then I was also promised after the song performed, I was also gonna receive you know a, a little percentage of the song, so points on the song. They, and they fake, also bro. the reason they did it is because they also needed that song to win. It's just Somebody hilarious said, to me fishy. that even in the lawsuit itself, they won't mention DJ Academics by name. You know, Drake is fine using DJ Academics to push all this various propaganda on Twitter and YouTube and during his live streams. But then when it comes to giving out an interview or showing love, he's never doing it for academics. He's always doing it for people like Aiden Ross. Recently, he went on XQC. And it's just funny that academics- And that's funny because he's, he's like Drake's biggest laser bro is his most loyal lapdog literally bro just like fucking cash nasty everybody meets lebron except for cash bro that shit is but crazy he literally gets treated like a red-headed stepchild Act, he's treating you like he's treating like you like 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 how when a thoughts in a dm stop oh i ain't trying to link her tonight keeping the book that don't make him a fuck nigga bro like that act don't that does though act that does because when he needs you he'll send you dms he'll play old buddy buddy with you but he really true. don't fuck with you how you showing him mad love he don't show you no love do you think drake shows you love yeah, drake showed me a lot of love how what's he do you hear how his voice pitched up like that that's like a lie <laughs> to show you love i got exclusive info i'm Act, on that's not push -ups. love I'm on the You're, push -ups. What, what do you do with that exclusive info you say it to the world you gas it up 10 times more he's using you as a free uh a billboard free that's promo. true Act, that you're the true. biggest media platform man eh? what that gotta do with drake I mean, the oh fact God, that this, this is mentioned so in the footnotes of the filing is just hilarious. Even Hold on. I mean, the fact that this is mentioned in the footnotes of the filing is just hilarious. Even academics had to admit at some point that this botting narrative on Spotify was nonsense, and he verified with someone at Spotify who he trusted that the streams were all legit. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I talked to my man from Spotify. I won't say the name right now, but... Legit Spotify nigga, he said, hey, y'all gonna be honest with you, I don't know what that person on your stream was talking about, them streams, them Kendrick streams is real. Drake even takes this claim further to suggest that Apple even got in on the action. UMG appears to have used similar tactics with other streaming services on information and belief that UMG paid or approved payments to Apple Inc. to have its voice activated digital assistant Siri purposely misdirect users to not like us. On Nickel, what? You can't even. D okay. This nigga just bringing up and making up anything at this point. This nigga making up anything Fine at this point. Sources reported that when users asked Siri to play the album Certified Lover Boy by recording artist Aubrey Drake Graham, aka Drake, Siri instead played Not Like Us, which contains the lyric Certified P. An allegation That's against cap. Drake. Now, I did find videos of this happening online. Play Certified Lover Boy on Spotify. No way, this is real. No. That's crazy. But honestly, I would chalk this up to an algorithm mistake. The term certified lover boy is said in Not Like Us, and so Siri took people to that mm. song. You can do this right now with the Drake record. Like today, I told Siri to play me Lean In, Lean In Soda, and it pulled up his song Virginia Beach. And here is where Drake really starts to get into the trenches of being down bad, where he starts crying that Not Like Us was being played on the radio an unfair amount of times, and he even claims that UMG was putting Twitter pages on payroll to endorse the song and the video for not like us specifically he lists the canadian dudes from the nfr podcast as part of its deal with umg the nfr podcast published podcast episodes and other content publicly about the song like they literally do for almost all major music releases including mm. all of drake's and in a sea change for UMG's internal policy, UMG removed the song's copyright restrictions on YouTube and Twitch, thereby whitelisting the song for the first time in UMG history, which further incentivized influencers to spread the song. This is also another lie, because people-
I was about to say some people did get copyrighted. Hit with copyright notices and takedowns left and right for the Not Like Us song and music video. And to me, even if all of this is true about paying off the Twitter pages and the podcast, it's like, okay, is a label that crazy for paying for promotion? Like this is something that I was just about to say because that's also just paid promo. Paid promo. That's just paid promo, it's Drake. The dawn of entertainment. And then this lawsuit lists all of the accomplishments Betting, and OVO the does that, too, that this song has garnered with its sheer numbers as it smashed a ton of Drake's previously held records. And this is where things get extra messy because Interscope gets directly involved. UMG's schemes to artificially inflate the popularity of Not Like Us were motivated, at least in part, by the desire of executives at Interscope to maximize their profits. UMG executives have an annual incentive program pursuant to which they are rewarded for meeting and surpassing sales and profit projections among other metrics. The incentives are largely based on the specific UMG division, rather than the performance of UMG more generally. For example, the annual incentive, or bonus of Interscope CEO, John Janik, is based 90% okay. on the financial success of Interscope, and only 10% of the financial success of UMG generally. Thus, on information and belief that Mr. Janik and other executives at Interscope have been incentivized to maximize the financial success of Interscope through the promotion of Not Like Us, and it's its revitalizing impact on the artist's prior recording catalog, including his first five studio albums, which are owned by Interscope. Well, it's like, duh, if one of my big legacy act artists catches the hottest record of the year, of course we're gonna push it. And the thing is, it's not like Kendrick's other albums have not maintained their place on the charts. I'm pretty sure that Good Kid Mad City has like the longest run on the charts of any rap album of all time. And the other thing is that this is something that Drake himself has likely benefited from time and time again. And Drake has apparently been seeking damages over Not Like Us and has been in contact with UMG trying to work something out. UMG allegedly refused to engage in negotiations. Instead, UMG has pointed the finger at Mr. Duckworth, insisting that Drake should initiate legal action against Mr. Duckworth rather than themselves. And even threatened to bring its own legal claims against Mr. Duckworth if Drake wants to pursue claims against UMG. Mr. Duckworth, for those of you who are unaware, Kendrick. is Kendrick. So basically, since Drake is going through with this lawsuit, UMG might be investigating Kendrick themselves. Which is ultimately what I think Drake wants, is to try and kill these two birds with one stone. Streaming and licensing is a zero-sum game. Every time a song breaks through, it means that another artist does not. UMG's choice to saturate the music market with Not Like Us comes at the expense of its other <laughs> artist, like Drake. As Drake is the petitioner's sole owner, which is the OLC I was talking about earlier, and the petitioner owns the copyright to Drake's entire catalog, petitioner suffered economic harm as a result of UMG's scheme. I don't know, I just think it's such a pussy move for Drake to do this, mm -hmm. because even if he is telling the truth about everything going on in the background, these are also things that he has been the beneficiary of for decades. Mm -hmm. Does nobody remember when Spotify would ride Drake's tip and place him as the entire my gosh, bro. I remember this shit too. Our homepage for every single user on the platform. Was that not boosting his algorithm? Rhythm. I mean, they had to give refunds after that shit, it was so bad. It's just crazy that for decades, they constantly promoted Drake like no other artist. He is is the artist on the most viral playlist he is shoved in our face constantly but now that someone else is getting that same shine it's like you his ego can't take it he's acting like the kid who goes home and cries to his mom and then they sue for assault after he gets his ass whooped even though he was the one who was instigating the fight he was begging kendrick to drop 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 and now this fool is out here suing people because he lost UMG stop, responded stop, stop. to these claims, by the way, and they say, The suggestion that UMG would do anything to undermine any of its artists is offensive and untrue. We employ the highest ethical practices in our marketing and promotional campaigns. No amount of contrived and absurd legal arguments in this pre-action submission can mask the fact that fans choose the music they want to hear. Yep. And it's been rumored that Drake has been at war with UMG for years, and Kanye was even out here saying things like this. Drake has a rich baby daddy named Lucian and Universal. Wow. <laughs> He's like, you know, like, man, my daddy got it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow. my daddy controlled the spins. My daddy got the DSPs. My daddy, Drake wow. has a rich baby daddy. Now, obviously, Kendrick <laughs> recently dropped his surprise album, GMX, completely out of nowhere. 
Like I'm talking about no promotion, no rollout, nothing. Literally just, just here you go, damn. And as a fan of Kendrick, I thought it was really good. It had some for sure hits with Squabble Up and Luther, and it was a cool 44 minute project. I really felt like this was kind of just an ode to California culture in general. Mm -hmm. But my initial thought is that Kendrick likely has more coming than this before the Super Bowl performance. The night it dropped, Drake would actually go on XQC's stream, acting extra salty, and this was his initial message to the world. I'm you need more than fairy tales to take me out. Nigga, fucking. Drake, this is XQC. Real streaming legend, me, I do music in case you didn't know. I'm here, as you can see, fully intact. Mind, body, and soul, you need facts to take me out. Fairy tales won't do it. As you guys can- Okay. Bozo. Oh my gosh, fucking Bozo. See, Drake cut off the braids and now appears to be balding from the stress of this battle. He would also break down every time XQC accidentally played artist he has a problem with, like The, like weekend. the weekend or Future. You have to switch this song now. You have to switch this song now. Real, we're real sixers, we're real sixers, they're real, real six hat. We don't listen to that. And overall, he still seems to be the same Nigga's fragile so guy bothered, we've always bro. known since he was in a wheelchair on Degrassi. This is the most Karen, sore loser moment I've ever seen a rapper go through. I mean, he did all of this exact same shit to Meek Mill back in the day. Back to Back was all over the radio. It was being promoted by Spotify. It was playing at house parties and sport events. And now that the rabbit has the gun, well, Drake doesn't seem to like that very much. Nope. And he basically wants to take his ball home after getting skunk 21 to Zippo. I mean, I have to think that Drake does have stronger evidence than this DJ Academics live stream. For him to put that 30% number out there when it comes to the licensing agreement makes me think that he he has to have some pretty bona fide information at his disposal, so we'll see how this plays out. Did Not Like Us definitely damage his career and his reputation? Absolutely. Did it cause him future financial harm? Yes. But that's what happens when you get your ass beat in a battle. I mean, look at what happened to Ja Rule after 50 Cent. I don't know. I want to know what true. you guys think about this entire situation down below. I also want to thank you guys for watching today's video, dropping a like, and subscribing. But as you guys know, it's been your boy, the Tan Superman. And some other rap lawsuits out here need to be covered, so I'm out. Alright, y'all, that... I mean, I don't know how to feel about it, bro, because Drake is like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, Drake, you're doing the most. I, you, you're actually doing the most, bro. And like, the, the fact that you're not suing over defamation is actually kind of nuts. Like, you're suing over inflated plays, so you're indirectly confirming that everything Kendrick said in the song is right.